Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Michael and I'm bitten by a radioactive book. Today I want to share with you my December wrap up. Uh, so I know what I've read in December and you do not, so let's talk about it. Um, I finished seven books and two novellas. It was like a fantastic reading month in terms of quantity uh, and also in terms of quality. I have uh, like uh, mostly like four star rated uh, books and one one five star. We have like uh, two or three three and a half stars, uh, but that uh, I rounded them up. So I think we have a good mix of like booktube darlings and maybe series you haven't heard uh, of. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, first off, I finished The Stone Knife by Anna Stevens. Um, Anna Stevens is the author of the Godblind Theory and uh, the, the Godblind God series. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, also of some more IP related books, like uh, she uh, wrote something for the Essenite um, publisher who does like a lot of IP branded things uh, for Marvel, for example. I think she wrote stories about Valkyrie and Sif. Uh, she also uh, has some work done for the Black Library for Warhammer um, and yeah and now uh, this is her new series uh, The Empire of the Drowned. It is a very Aztecian Ma Mayan inspired South American mythologically uh, enhanced world um, and it is a grimdark uh, series and we're following a bunch of characters, like six or seven POVs. And um, we have a conflict, like we have an empire, and this empire invades nation after nation and brings them under the influence of the song. So the song is like a, a concept that everybody can hear, like a little bit like in a hive mind. Um, and uh, it, it calms the people and the, the great singer uh, can influence the uh, people within his nation by like changing up the, the song, which is a very interesting concept. And uh, so we, we have perspectives set there in the empire by the ruling elite and also perspectives on the other side of the of the conflict uh, where we have like the last like free people who are not under the influence and uh, a second very like interesting concept what they have is um, they have some sort of monsters the the drowned name giving for the the name of the series and the drowned are imagine like a creature from the black lagoon but they're also sirens, which have like some kind of siren song, so they lure people to them into the water than to basically uh, kill them. And um, the, the interesting thing is that they are revered in the empire um, of, the, of the drowned or of, of song, and uh, yeah, uh, revered as gods, and there are people sacri being sacrificed uh, to them. And uh, in the uh, other nations, they are like seen like like horror creatures, uh, and that has a very interesting dynamic. We have like one character uh, from these other nations called uh, Xessa, and she uh, uh, has a, a role of somebody who needs to get water from uh, the rivers, uh, like up to the uh, city where they live in, and uh, she is deaf. And that is by decision, because uh, uh, then she can't fall under the influence of the song. So that that's like the, the basic premise uh, of the book and of the conflict. Um, it wasn't like executed perfectly, because we have uh, a lot of characters, and so it get a little bit of time to get attached to everyone, to get interested in, in every string of the uh, of the narrative, but uh, it, it is overall a, a really, really good read and I'd like to continue with the series. That is one of the books that's maybe like 3.5 stars and I, and I round it up. Uh, very interesting ending, so I, I'm very eager to know where we go from here. And it's actually the perfect time to start with the series. Uh, the first two books are out, the third book comes in March. Um, moving on, uh, we have another series that is already finished, so if you're interested you can get right into it. It's uh, The Rise of the Automatic uh, 
Automated Aristocrats by Mark Hodder, and it, it's the sixth and final installment in his Burton and Swinburne series. This is very, very like classic uh, steampunk um, uh, with uh, the Victorian setting. Not that Victorian. You will find that uh, find that out uh, uh, over the course of the of the books. What I mean by that. Um, uh, we have uh, a lot of historical figures like Sir Richard Francis Burton and others, but completely like removed from their roles that they had uh, in, in, in history and are like part of the uh, narrative. The series uh, starts out with um, uh, the Spring Hill Jack uh, book, um, and it is very, very good in blending like over-the-top action and humor with on the other hand very philosophical topics that were like prevalent at the time um, and the the series does like a very very good split of it has has like very likable memorable characters and as I said the the, the plot gets crazier and crazier as the series moves on so I, I wrote, uh, I, I wrote, I wish I had, <laughs> I, I read that last uh, in, installment of the series uh, and uh, when, when you look at like the first two books that were, you can read them contained within it, it, themselves, so it's uh, uh, kind of standalones that have a little like, like links, but by book three and moving forward you will see that there's like more overlaps and it's crazy with like multi-dimensional, um, uh, the the multi-dimensional multiverse uh, and and things like that and yeah in 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 the end it's it's a great and fitting uh, finale for the series so I really enjoyed my time with that. Um, the third book I read is like the first like booktube darling I think it's Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. I think I don't have to tell you too much about it. Uh, it's uh, it's the the Night's Watch, the first in the Night Watch, Night's Watch series, um, uh, set in Ankh-Morpork, uh, the fictional world uh, or the fictional uh, main town on Terry Pratchett's disc world. Um, and we're following the characters of the Night's Watch, and their their only job is to go out there every night and say like, oh, it's two o'clock and everything is fine. But of course not everything is fine and uh, um, uh, so how they uh, get out of these this attitude and change that uh, that's that's some part of the uh, of the of the novel and uh, yeah if if you if you like terry pratchett this will be one of the uh, books that you will enjoy as well uh, or already have enjoyed as well and and so did i it was technically a reread uh, for me, I think I've read so many of these books uh, in in German when I was younger, and now I'm going like like in publication order to to read maybe one or two each year, uh, and uh, get like uh, the the whole series under my belt, and I always enjoy my time staying in the disc world. Moving on from there, I read another like very famous booktube darling, uh, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Uh, w once again, I don't have to tell you too much what it's about. It's it's cozy fantasy with uh, like uh, an orc character who uh, was a mercenary and now she has discovered coffee and really likes that, a gnomish invention of course in that world. And she wants to open up a coffee shop. And that's basically what the book is about. Like, uh, uh, what what I found really impressive is like Travis Baldry was like able to create a genre of its own, or maybe like be the first where books like his were like mentioned under that genre of like cozy fantasy. So, uh, so what Legend and Lattes does for cozy fantasy, I think, is the same that Stardew Valley uh, did for Cozy Gaming. Um, and, and so this is a very great accomplishment. And I, I read this on, on Christmas. This was like like a recommendation by a German booktuber, uh, Larissa from Larissa's Library, which I really, really uh, enjoy. And um, so, so she said, oh, she, she read that uh, like in 2022. Uh, uh, around Christmas and so I did this as well uh, this year and maybe do it with uh, 
uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust, I think the, the sequel is called, or the prequel is called. Um, so I might do that next year. Yeah, uh, uh, Viv is a very like likable character, easy to root for. Uh, we have like uh, side characters who are really, really awesome and amazing. And I enjoyed my time with it uh, around Christmas. Moving on from there, I've read one, I think, of the more controversial uh, new entries uh, uh, from 2023. It was Eleven Cycle by uh, Kian and Ardalan, uh, the first in the Mistland series. And this is a chunker of 800 pages of bleak, dream dark, uh, character driven uh, storytelling. Um, we are following four characters in this like fictional world and the lore behind the world uh, that I think is where the book mainly gets its Dark Souls companion from uh, like the Dark Souls or Souls-like uh, games uh, mainly made by From Software um, and, and so the tone in some of the scenes is, is very similar. I, I expected more of this kind of lore based thing, but actually you get a lot more like in depth with uh, four different uh, characters, uh, a young girl, uh, a com coming of age story who has like a, a magical secret, um, a, a commander of the army who's like a, a half god, um, there is a soldier, Nora, uh, who is in, in the army as well, and we see her uh, like uh, the development uh, over the course of the book. And then we have Chroma, uh, and he is some kind of uh, orc, I, I'd say, uh, uh, they are called, I think, Arax in this, uh, in this world. Um, and uh, and he is actually one of them that is not really free, but like been pacified by humans, and uh, he's in, uh, uh, like in, inside a camp uh, with other uh, uh, people of his uh, of his race, um, and uh, yeah, and we then get like a fifth uh, point of view, like every once in a while, uh, for some godly being, which is called like the eleventh seat. And the book takes a while. It takes a while and most of the time you ask yourself, why am I reading this actually? It, it, it gives an answer to towards the end. But I think that answer was given a little bit too late and that the book was heavily in need of, of, of more editing. Uh, I think it, it it could easily be like only a two or, or three point uh, or three star read. It, it was three point five for me because I can see that this is going somewhere, and I really really like the lore behind. But the lore bits were a two or, or too few or uh, too too sparse uh, uh, over the course of the of the story, and there was a lot of filler. Uh, in there and trigger warnings for like everything, everything. Uh, so uh, so so Kieran and Adolin is like okay. There's these four characters and how much pain and how much suffering and how much bad things can I mount on top? And he tries that and uh, um, and I, I, so it, it's it's not a, an enjoyable read. It's an interesting read, I'd say. So I'm, I'm not sorry to have read it, but it was maybe the weakest book that I uh, read in December. Moving on from there, we have another very well-known uh, mainstay at uh, uh, Goodreads uh, and uh, Booktube. It's Brandon Sanderson, uh, um, Elantris. So I have like a little story to tell about me and Brandon Sanderson. If you know my, my older videos, I'm always more like I'm a Sanderson liker and not a Sanderson lover. Uh, and uh, that might be mainly because I read his books like very early on, most of them between 2013 and 2015, uh, and I had no idea of the of the Cosmere and the interconnectivity between all of them. And and when talk came up around like Word of Radiance and everybody was talking about the Cosmere, I was over the the, the Cos what? 
so uh, it, it never really uh, w w worked out for me, resonated uh, with me. I never saw the like connections and maybe that, uh, 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 and I was always like a little bit, oh, all these other people have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and so I guess I wanted to be in on it and so um, 2024 one of the like goals uh, uh, like I have is to be at like a year of Cosmere uh, where I re uh, read a lot of the Cosmere books um, and yeah I started uh, this in December with Elantris had a good time with it uh, act actually I bumped up my rating from three to four stars it was very interesting to uh, to read my um, complaints I had uh, when I read it the first time and found that these complaints uh, weren't uh, like um, influencing my my reading experience uh, the second time around uh, so I, I, I bumped it up to four stars I had a really good time with like the three characters I, th I think my my main problem to to sum it up I think most of you will know Elantris or, or, or what it's about uh, uh, so we have like two characters who would either be more like protagonists uh, uh, with uh, Rayodin and uh, the princess uh, whose name is escaping me right now, uh, Sereni. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Rathen who is more like the antagonist of the, of the story. And actually uh, during the first time uh, I was uh, really fascinated by Rathen as a character and I was like, uh, like oh Rayodin is a little bit of a Gary Stu character and uh, Sereni, she's displayed as being very capable but then she slips up a lot of the time so so her intelligence doesn't shine so much and and actually now reading it the second time around it was more like oh I enjoy actually that uh, Ray Odin is a decent character and I could see more like Sereni and Rathen and their like back and forth dueling of, of politicking uh, uh, like on, on the same level and and so for for each of them some of the things had to work out and others not uh, uh, and I found it way more enjoyable so uh, another uh, four star read for me now moving on to Dark Water Daughter uh, the gem of December uh, that was my five star uh, book uh, uh, if you have seen my top three reads of 2023 uh, 20, uh, it's the number four book in there and I really enjoyed my time um, so we are following two very likable characters, Mary and Samuel. Uh, Mary is a storm singer, so somebody who's magic inside of her and she can sing uh, to the storms. Samuel is also, uh, yeah, has magic abilities. He's a, a sooth, so he can basically look into the other and the other is kind of the magical realm in this world it is like a a pirate story but not the typical like maybe more caribbean inspired setting uh, it's it's a it's a northern uh, setting maybe think more of like like russia scandinavia uh, uh, kind kind of setting but not with like vikings it's it's more set like in the uh, jacobian uh, uh, era um, and yeah but still we have like lots of pirates uh, in uh, in the story we have a very interesting world building with uh, sentient ships or sentient figureheads of of ships uh, uh, where gistings uh, the ghostly beings in this world uh, actually they come from the other and then manifest in trees uh, in our world and then the wood is harvested from the trees and uh, the ships are built with that and so the spirits uh, go into the ships and, and, and they play some some interesting uh, role yeah and I, I really enjoyed being in this world being with this ca uh, those characters and I can't wait for uh, Black Tide Suns Sons or Sun, I don't know, uh, by by H. M. Long. This is the follow-up. I think it's it's kind of a duology, but you can perfectly uh, uh, read that book as a standalone as well. Uh, and I think the follow-up book comes out in July. Um, so two more uh, two more entries to go. Um, then we have another th series I finished up. Uh, it is 
the uh, a Desert Torn Asunder is the book and the series is the Song of the Shattered Sands by Bradley P. P. Beaulieu which starts with Twelve Kings or Twelve Kings and Sharakai depends on what edition you pick up I think one is the, the English the other the, uh, the American edition um, and this is a, a very desert Arabian Nights inspired uh, kind, kind of setting. Uh, we are following uh, Chedamin uh, uh, and uh, a plethora of, of other, uh, other characters uh, in, this, uh, in this world. Uh, it's, it starts out like, like in, the, in, the, in the first book uh, with uh, a handful, maybe four uh, po points of view, and now in the end you had like more than 10 or 12 uh, um, points of view over the course of the whole book. Not every POV is like in, 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 in every book, you always have like six-ish or something uh, like that uh, per book and it's a lot about politicking, uh, politicking a lot about uh, like ad adventure uh, like they they sail uh, through the desert uh, uh, with uh, with ships uh, which is like like very interesting uh, you have different kinds of magic blood magic necromantic uh, magic uh, there's like 12 ruling kings in the city of Sharakai who did like a, de a deal or a pact uh, with some gods and, and which made them mainly immortal and in the beginning of the story they are like the main antagonists uh, of the of the story we also over the course of the book see like their points of view um, and yeah it's it's a, a series very well done I think very underrated but I really uh, enjoyed the series uh, yeah I'm really lucky to have uh, to have finished it uh, this year so I can move on to Bradley P. Williams next uh, series where the first book came out uh, towards the end uh, towards the end of uh, 2023 and I'm really looking forward to to pick that up as well um, and uh, rounding up uh, the the story uh, is The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, one, once again, uh, of course, it's set in the same world as Elantris, uh, but on like another continent. There's very uh, only small connections uh, between the story, if at all. And uh, it uh, is a very interesting story. Of course, with Sanderson, you always get like interest in uh, magic systems, and here it is about using soul stamps, like uh, 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 figuring out uh, uh, details about uh, about things. Uh, so you can put a stamp on one thing, maybe on a very plain like vase, and then it becomes a masterpiece. Uh, because you copy it from like another masterpiece uh, uh, kind of antiquity or something like that. And uh, uh, so mainly in this world this kind of technique is, is used to uh, copy things and now our main protagonist is like uh, in, in jail and she's a very good like forger uh, and now she's actually tasked with the challenge to uh, forge the soul of the emperor so not only like an object but also like a human being and uh, that is that is a novella it's uh, very well done I think rated four stars uh, as well I had a, had a really great time with it I don't want to talk way more about it because it's like a short story and you should read it um, and um, as I said, like it's it's very enjoyable, and it helped me keep up the momentum uh, with the uh, with the year of Cosmere. So that is already uh, already a, a very long video. We're talking about over twenty minutes, but I think that's that's kind of fine for uh, nine books. Uh, so let me know in the comments, uh, of course, if you read any of those and enjoyed them. Uh, what did you uh, uh, read in December? Did you find like a new favorite towards the end of the year? Or was it more like a, a slow uh, reading month uh, and you did other things? Um, yeah, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you soon. Uh, that's a promise. Uh, I have lots of ideas actually for videos. So uh, you you, you won't uh, be, be rid of me for a while. Um, yeah, so enjoy a weekend and I hope that you get bitten by a really good book too. Bye.